Brought to you by WikiVD Documentaries. Thomas Edison. Thomas Alva Edison was an American inventor and businessman who has been described as America's greatest inventor. He developed many devices that greatly influenced life around the world, including the phonograph, the motion picture camera, and the long-lasting, practical electric light bulb. Dubbed the Wizard of Menlo Park, he was one of the first inventors to apply the principles of mass production and large-scale teamwork to the process of invention. And, because of that, he is often credited with the creation of the first industrial research laboratory. Edison was a prolific inventor, holding 1093 U.S. patents in his name, as well as many patents in the United Kingdom, France, and Germany. More significant than the number of Edison's patents was the widespread impact of his inventions, electric light and power utilities, sound recording, and motion pictures all established major new industries worldwide. Edison's inventions contributed to mass communication and, in particular, telecommunications. These included a stock ticker, a mechanical vote recorder, a battery for an electric car, electrical power, recorded music, and motion pictures. His advanced work in these fields was an outgrowth of his early career as a telegraph operator. Edison developed a system of electric power generation and distribution to homes, businesses, and factories, a crucial development in the modern industrialized world. His first power station was on Pearl Street in Manhattan, New York. Early Life Thomas Edison was born in Milan, Ohio, and grew up in Port Huron, Michigan. He was the seventh and last child of Samuel Ogden Edison, Jr. and Nancy Matthews Elliott. His father, the son of a loyalist refugee, had moved as a boy with the family from Nova Scotia, settling in southwestern Ontario, in a village known as Shrewsbury, later Vienna, by 1811. Samuel Jr. eventually fled Ontario because he took part in the unsuccessful Mackenzie Rebellion of 1837. His father, Samuel Sr., had earlier fought in the War of 1812 as captain of the 1st Middlesex Regiment. By contrast, Samuel Jr.'s struggle found him on the losing side, and he crossed into the United States at Sarnia Port Huron. Once across the border, he found his way to Milan, Ohio. His patrilineal family line was Dutch by way of New Jersey. The surname had originally been Edson. Edison only attended school for a few months, and was instead taught by his mother. Much of his education came from reading R.G. Parker's School of Natural Philosophy and the Cooper Union for the Advancement of Science and Art. Edison developed hearing problems at an early age. The cause of his deafness has been attributed to a bout of scarlet fever during childhood and recurring untreated middle ear infections. Around the middle of his career, Edison attributed the hearing impairment to being struck on the ears by a train conductor when his chemical laboratory in a boxcar caught fire, and he was thrown off the train in Smith's Creek, Michigan, along with his apparatus and chemicals. In his later years, he modified the story to say the injury occurred when the conductor, in helping him onto a moving train, lifted him by the ears. Edison's family moved to Port Huron, Michigan, after the railroad bypassed Milan in 1854, and business declined. Edison sold of candy and newspapers on trains running from Port Huron to Detroit, and sold vegetables. He briefly worked as a telegraph operator in 1863 for the Grand Trunk Railway at Stratford, Ontario Railway at age 16. He was held responsible for a near collision. He also studied qualitative analysis and conducted chemical experiments on the train until he left the job. 
Edison obtained the exclusive right to sell newspapers on the road, and, with the aid of four assistants, he set in type and printed the Grand Trunk Herald, which he sold with his other papers. This began Edison's long streak of entrepreneurial ventures, as he discovered his talents as a businessman. These talents eventually led him to found 14 companies, including General Electric, which is still one of the largest publicly traded companies in the world. Telegrapher Edison became a telegraph operator after he saved three-year-old Jimmy McKenzie from being struck by a runaway train. Jimmy's father, station agent J.U. McKenzie of Mount Clemens, Michigan, was so grateful that he trained Edison as a telegraph operator. Edison's first telegraphy job away from Port Huron was at Stratford Junction, Ontario, on the Grand Trunk Railway. In 1866, at the age of 19, Edison moved to Louisville, Kentucky, where, as an employee of Western Union, he worked the Associated Press Bureau Newswire. Edison requested the night shift, which allowed him plenty of time to spend at his two favorite pastimes, reading and experimenting. Eventually, the latter preoccupation cost him his job. One night in 1867, he was working with a lead acid battery when he spilled sulfuric acid onto the floor. It ran between the floorboards and onto his boss desk below. The next morning Edison was fired. One of his mentors during those early years was a fellow telegrapher and inventor named Franklin Leonard Pope, who allowed the impoverished youth to live and work in the basement of his Elizabeth, New Jersey, home. Some of Edison's earliest inventions were related to telegraphy, including a stock ticker. His first patent was for the electric vote recorder, which was granted on June 1, 1869. Marriages and Children on December 25, 1871, Edison married 16-year-old Mary Stillwell, whom he had met two months earlier. She was an employee at one of his shops. They had three children, Marion Estelle Edison, nicknamed Dot Thomas Alva Edison, Jr., nicknamed Dash, William Leslie Edison Inventor, graduate of the Sheffield Scientific School at Yale, 1900. Mary Edison died at age 29 on August 9, 1884, of unknown causes, possibly from a brain tumor or a morphine overdose. Doctors frequently prescribe morphine to women in those years to treat a variety of causes, and researchers believe that her symptoms could have been from morphine poisoning. Edison generally preferred spending time in the laboratory to being with his family. On February 24, 1886, at the age of 39, Edison married the 20-year-old Mina Miller in Akron, Ohio. She was the daughter of the inventor Lewis Miller, co-founder of the Chautauqua Institution, and a benefactor of Methodist charities. They also had three children together, Madeline Edison, who married John A. Sloan, Charles Edison, governor of New Jersey, who took over his father's company and experimental laboratories upon his father's death. Theodore Miller Edison, credited with more than 80 patents. Mina outlived Thomas Edison, dying on August 24, 1947. Beginning his career S. Washington, D.C. studio in April 1878. Edison began his career as an inventor in Newark, New Jersey, with the automatic repeater and his other improved telegraphic devices. But the invention that first gained him wider notice was the phonograph in 1877. This accomplishment was so unexpected by the public at large as to appear almost magical. Edison became known as the Wizard of Menlo Park, New Jersey, 
His first phonograph recorded on tin foil around a grooved cylinder. Despite its limited sound quality and that the recordings could be played only a few times, the phonograph made Edison a celebrity. Joseph Henry, president of the National Academy of Sciences, and one of the most renowned electrical scientists in the U.S., described Edison as the most ingenious inventor in this country, or in any other. In April 1878, Edison traveled to Washington to demonstrate the phonograph before the National Academy of Sciences, congressmen, senators, and U.S. President Hayes. The Washington Post described Edison as a genius and his presentation as a scene that will live in history. Although Edison obtained a patent for the phonograph in 1878, he did little to develop it until Alexander Graham Bell, Chichester Bell, and Charles Tainter produced a phonograph-like device in the 1880s that used wax-coated cardboard cylinders. Research and Development Facility in Dearborn, Michigan. Note, the pipe organ against the back wall. Edison's major innovation was the first industrial research lab, which was built in Menlo Park, a part of Raritan Township, Middlesex County, New Jersey. It was built with the funds from the sale of Edison's quadruplex telegraph. After his demonstration of the telegraph, Edison was not sure that his original plan to sell it for $4,000 to $5,000 was right, so he asked Western Union to make a bid. He was surprised to hear them offer $10,000, which he gratefully accepted. The quadruplex telegraph was Edison's first big financial success, and Menlo Park became the first institution set up with the specific purpose of producing constant technological innovation and improvement. Edison was legally attributed with most of the inventions produced there, though many employees carried out research and development under his direction. His staff was generally told to carry out his directions in conducting research, and he drove them hard to produce results. William Joseph Hammer, a consulting electrical engineer, started working for Edison and began his duties as a laboratory assistant in December 1879. He assisted in experiments on the telephone, phonograph, electric railway, iron ore separator, electric lighting, and other developing inventions. However, Hammer worked primarily on the incandescent electric lamp and was put in charge of tests and records on that device. In 1880, he was appointed chief engineer of the Edison Lamp Works. In his first year, the plant under general manager Francis Robbins Upson turned out 50,000 lamps. According to Edison, Hammer was a pioneer of incandescent electric lighting. Frank J. Sprague, a competent mathematician and former naval officer, was recruited by Edward H. Johnson and joined the Edison Organization 1883. One of Sprague's contributions to the Edison Laboratory at Menlo Park was to expand Edison's mathematical methods. Despite the common belief that Edison did not use mathematics, analysis of his notebooks revealed that he was an astute user of mathematical analysis conducted by his assistants such as Francis Robbins Upton, for example determining the critical parameters of his electric lighting system including lamp resistance by an analysis of Ohm's law, Dule's law and economics. Nearly all of Edison's patents were utility patents, which were protected for a 17-year period and included inventions of processes that are electrical, mechanical or chemical in nature. About a dozen were design patents, which protect an ornamental design for up to a 14-year period. As in most patents, the inventions he described were improvements over prior art. The phonograph patent, in contrast, was unprecedented as describing the first device to record and reproduce sounds. 
In just over a decade, Edison's Menlo Park Laboratory had expanded to occupy two city blocks. Edison said he wanted the lab to have a stock of almost every conceivable material. A newspaper article printed in 1887 reveals the seriousness of his claim, stating the lab contained 8,000 kinds of chemicals, every kind of screw made, every size of needle, every kind of cord or wire, hair of humans, jawses, hogs, cows, rabbits, goats, minks, camels, silk in every texture, cocoons, various kinds of hoofs, shark's teeth, deer horns, tortoise shell, cork, resin, varnish and oil, ostrich feathers, a peacock's tail, jet amber, rubber, all oars, and the list goes on. Over his desk, Edison displayed a placard with Sir Joshua Reynolds' famous quotation, there is no expedient to which a man will not resort to avoid the real labor of thinking. This slogan was reputedly posted at several other locations throughout the facility. With Menlo Park, Edison had created the first industrial laboratory concerned with creating knowledge and then controlling its application. Edison's name is registered on 1093 patents. Carbon Telephone Transmitter In 1876, Edison began work to improve the microphone for telephones by developing a carbon microphone that used a button of carbon that would change resistance with the pressure of sound waves. Up to that point, microphones, such as the ones developed by Johann Philipp Rice and Alexander Graham Bell, worked by generating a weak current. Edison was one of many inventors working on the problem of creating a usable microphone for telephony by having it modulate an electrical current pass through it. His work was concurrent with Emil Berliner's loose contact carbon transmitter and David Edward Hughes' study, and published paper on the physics of loose contact carbon transmitters. Edison used the carbon microphone concept in 1877 to create an improved telephone for Western Union. In 1886, Edison found a way to improve a Bell telephone microphone, one that used loose contact ground carbon with his discovery that it worked far better if the carbon was roasted. This type was put in use in 1890 and was used in all telephones along with the Bell receiver until the 1980s. Electric Light In 1878, Edison began working on a system of electrical illumination something he hoped could compete with gas and oil-based lighting. He began by tackling the problem of creating a long-lasting incandescent lamp, something that would be needed for indoor use. Many earlier inventors had previously devised incandescent lamps, including Alessandro Volta's demonstration of a glowing wire in 1800 and inventions by Henry Woodward and Matthew Evans, others who developed early and commercially impractical incandescent electric lamps included Humphrey Davy, James Bowman Lindsay, Moses G. Farmer, William E. Sawyer, Joseph Swan, and Heinrich Goebel. Some of these early bulbs had such flaws as an extremely short life, high expense to produce, and high electric current drawn, making them difficult to apply on a large scale commercially. Edison realized that to connect a series of electric lights to an economically manageable size and using the necessary thickness of copper wire, he would have to develop a lamp that used a low amount of current. This lamp must have high resistance and use relatively low voltage. After many experiments, first with carbon filaments and then with platinum and other metals, Edison returned to a carbon filament. The first successful test was on October 22, 1879, it lasted 13.5 hours. Edison continued 
to improve this design and on November 4, 1879, filed for U.S. Patent 223898 for an electric lamp using a carbon filament, a strip coiled and connected to platina contact wires. This was the first commercially practical incandescent light. Although the patent described several ways of creating the carbon filament including cotton and linen thread, wood splints, papers coiled in various ways. It was not until several months after the patent was granted that Edison and his team discovered a carbonized bamboo filament that could last over 1,200 hours. The idea of using this particular raw material originated from Edison's recalling his examination of a few threads from a bamboo fishing pole while relaxing on the shore of Battle Lake in the present-day state of Wyoming, where he and other members of a scientific team had traveled so that they could clearly observe a total eclipse of the sun on July 29, 1878, from the Continental Divide. In 1878, Edison formed the Edison Electric Light Company in New York City with several financiers, including J.P. Morgan, Spencer Trask, and the members of the Vanderbilt family. Edison made the first public demonstration of his incandescent light bulb on December 31, 1879, in Menlo Park. It was during this time that he said, We will make electricity so cheap that only the rich will burn. Candles, S. New Steamship, the Columbia, was the first commercial application for Edison's incandescent light bulb in 1880. Henry Villard, president of the Oregon Railroad and Navigation Company, attended Edison's 1879 demonstration. Villard was impressed and requested Edison install his electric lighting system aboard Villard's company's new steamer. The Columbia, although hesitant at first, Edison agreed to Villard's request. Most of the work was completed in May 1880, and the Columbia went to New York City, where Edison and his personnel installed Columbia's new lighting system. The Columbia was Edison's first commercial application for his incandescent light bulb. The Edison equipment was removed from Columbia in 1895. Louis Latimer joined the Edison Electric Light Company in 1884. Latimer had received a patent in January 1881 for the process of manufacturing carbons, an improved method for the production of carbon filaments for light bulbs. Latimer worked as an engineer, a draftsman, and an expert witness in patent litigation on electric lights. George Westinghouse's company bought Philip Deal's competing induction lamp patent rights for $25,000, forcing the holders of the Edison patent to charge a more reasonable rate for the use of the Edison patent rights and lowering the price of the electric lamp. On October 8, 1883, the U.S. Patent Office ruled that Edison's patent was based on the work of William E. Sawyer and was Therefore, invalid. Litigation continued for nearly six years, until October 6, 1889, when a judge ruled that Edison's electric light improvement claim for a filament of carbon of high resistance was valid. To avoid a possible court battle with Joseph Swan, whose British patent had been awarded a year before Edison's, he and Swan formed a joint company called Ediswin to manufacture and market the invention in Britain. Mahen Theatre in BRNO opened in 1882 and was the first public building in the world to use Edison's electric lamps. Francis Jail, Edison's assistant in the invention of the lamp, supervised the installation. In September 2010, a sculpture of three giant light bulbs was erected in BRNO, in front of the theater. Electric Power Distribution After devising a commercially viable electric light bulb on October 21, 1879, 
Edison developed an electric utility to compete with the existing gaslight utilities. On December 17, 1880, he founded the Edison Illuminating Company, and during the 1880s, he patented a system for electricity distribution. The company established the first investor-owned electric utility in 1882 on Pearl Street Station, New York City. On September 4, 1882, Edison switched on his Pearl Street Generating Station's electrical power distribution system, which provided 110 volts direct current to 59 customers in Le Manhattan. In January 1882, Edison switched on the first steam generating power station at Hoban Viaduct in London. The DC supply system provided electricity supplies to street lamps and several private dwellings within a short distance of the station. On January 19, 1883, the first standardized incandescent electric lighting system employing overhead wires began service in Roselle, New Jersey. War of Currents Dot. As Edison expanded his direct current power delivery system, he received stiff competition from companies installing alternating current systems. From the early 1880s, AC arc lighting systems for streets and large spaces had been an expanding business in the U.S. With the development of transformers in Europe and by Westinghouse Electric in the U.S. in 1885 to 1886, it became possible to transmit AC long distances over thinner and cheaper wires and, step down, the voltage at the destination for distribution to users. This allowed AC to be used in street lighting and in lighting for small business and domestic customers. The market Edison's patented low-voltage DC incandescent lamp system was designed to supply. Edison's DC empire suffered from one of its chief drawbacks, it was suitable only for the high density of customers found in large cities. Edison's DC plants could not deliver electricity to customers more than one mile from the plant, and left a patchwork of unsupplied customers between plants. Small cities and rural areas could not afford an Edison-style system at all, leaving a large part of the market without electrical service. AC companies expanded into this gap. Edison expressed views that AC was unworkable, and the high voltages used were dangerous. As George Westinghouse installed his first AC systems in 1886, Thomas Edison struck out personally against his chief rival stating, just as certain as death. Westinghouse will kill a customer within six months after he puts in a system of any size. He has got a new thing and it will require a great deal of experimenting to get it working practically. Many reasons have been suggested for Edison's anti-AC stance. One notion is that the inventor could not grasp the more abstract theories behind AC and was trying to avoid developing a system he did not understand. Edison also appeared to have been worried about the high voltage from misinstalled AC systems killing customers and hurting the sales of electric power systems in general. Primary was the fact that Edison Electric based their design on low voltage EC and switching a standard after they had installed over 100 systems was, in Edison's mind, out of the question. By the end of 1887, Edison Electric was losing market share to Westinghouse, who had built 68 AC-based power stations to Edison's 121 DC-based stations. To make matters worse, for Edison, the Thomson Houston Electric Company of Lynn, Massachusetts built 22 power stations, parallel to expanding competition between Edison and the AC companies was rising public furor over a series of deaths in the spring of 1888 caused by PO-mounted high-voltage alternating current lines. 
This turned into a media frenzy against high-voltage alternating current and the seemingly greedy and callous lighting companies that used it. Edison took advantage of the public perception of AC as dangerous, and joined with self-styled New York anti-AC crusader Harold P. Brown in a propaganda campaign, aiding Brown in the public electrocution of animals with AC, and supported legislation to control and severely limit AC installations and voltages in what was now being referred to as a battle of currents. The development of the electric chair was used in an attempt to portray AC as having a greater lethal potential than DC and smear Westinghouse. At the same time via Edison colluding with Brown and Westinghouse's chief AC rival, the Thomson Houston Electric Company, to make sure the first electric chair was powered by a Westinghouse AC generator. Thomas Edison's staunch anti-AC tactics were not sitting well with his own stockholders. By the early 1890s, Edison's company was generating much smaller profits than its AC rivals, and the War of Currents would come to an end in 1892, with Edison forced out of controlling his own company. That year, the financier J.P. Morgan engineered a merger of Edison General Electric with Thomson Houston that put the board of Thomson Houston in charge of the new company called General Electric. General Electric now controlled three quarters of the U.S. electrical business and would compete with Westinghouse for the AC market. Fluoroscopy Edison is credited with designing and producing the first commercially available fluoroscope, a machine that uses X-rays to take radiographs. Until Edison discovered that calcium tongue state fluoroscopy screens produce brighter images than the barium platina cyanide screens originally used by Wilhelm Röntgen, the technology was capable of producing only very faint images. The fundamental design of Edison's fluoroscope is still in use today. Although Edison abandoned the project after nearly losing his own eyesight and seriously injuring his assistant, Clarence Daly, Daly made himself an enthusiastic human guinea pig for the fluoroscopy project and was exposed to a poisonous dose of radiation. He later died of injuries related to the exposure. In 1903, a shaken Edison said, Don't talk to me about X-rays, I am afraid of them. Thank you for watching. Brought to you by Wikivd Documentaries. Please like and subscribe below. Please like and subscribe below.